All life, all, all cellular life, has come from one ancestor, yes. as far as we understand. Well, one very closely knit group of organisms. Yeah, that, that seems to be the case. It's which referred is, to as the last universal common ancestor. Yeah. Which just basically means after that point, um, things began to diverge. So that, so we began to see the branches that we now have in, yeah. in the biosphere. Yeah. But, which is what the short is sometimes called Luca or Luca. Luca, yeah. Luca. L-U-C-A. Uh, I guess we'll just use that. So there, there might be have been a, a biosphere before Luca yeah, like yeah before the first the first cell that we the, the last common ancestor might not actually be the first cell that arose yeah it might not be that that Luca organism or set of organisms might not have been those proto cells in the hydrothermal vent there might have been a, a whole cellular biosphere flourishing in some way before this Luca that we, we think yeah. of now and which could have either as we said been destroyed or, or you know bottlenecked, a bottleneck by some horrible event like heavy bombardment type thing or it could have just been sorry yeah or, yeah. or it could have just been that the, the, the one particular that there were all these sort of experiments in how to be a good cell yeah. going on and Luca was just and a Luca was just the one, good one that just that's nailed it yeah like, oh this is it yeah. this is it guys sorted yeah it just, and after that nothing else had a chance nothing else could compete with it yeah exactly <laughs> just, um, and then life diverged from that point yeah so there is some evidence so we, we were talking about viruses when before we started this show because we were trying to work out if they were life or not yeah um and there's some evidence in viruses that they contain proteins that predate luca yeah it's nuts which is crazy i mean viruses are crazy anyway they're just a kind of weird sort of massively diverse like super abundant part of microbial life that seems to be kind of really ancient possibly possibly several several different origins of viruses yep. uh, they just sort of that type of lifestyle has emerged a few different times yep. over the course of evolution yep. but but certainly some sets of viruses seem to uh, suggest that they predate their origins predate that luca yep. so their last universal common ancestor actually isn't really a last universal common ancestor if you include viruses yes actually that's further back yeah which is a crazy and, thought. and and the 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 way in which viruses evolved as well is 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 bizarre because they may have come from cell, cells some seem certainly to have cells have turned yeah. into viruses they've lost a lot of their machinery and become parasitic yeah well um, that's that's the thing the fact that I mean, virus viruses the way viruses function is they have to sort of invade a, a host cell yeah and that's how they replicate the yeah. actual like virus floating around doesn't really do anything no um so the fact that viruses possibly predate luca where it looks like they do implies that there must have been cellular life back then either those viruses exactly. themselves um were used to be cells and as you were suggesting like gradually became yeah. less and less cell like and more and more virus like like pandora viruses we even think as maybe that's yeah an exactly of, exactly yeah which are like giant viruses yeah weird things yeah viruses that you can sort of see underneath an optical microscope which yeah. is a bit nuts for yeah. a virus giant in a kind of microbial sense yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're not massive no Can't given size. yeah but given the most viruses are like nanometers like yes. real real small these yeah are, so there's either that option that option or the other option which is just that um viruses and s- viruses have always sort of existed as, as, as soon as you had cells you kind of you viruses was mm. sort of the uh, the other option of reproduction was to yeah. just exploit the cells yeah. and they've always sort of been around and that pre-luca you just again just had viruses and infecting a bunch of cells so so uh, either, both, either, either both scenario, of those yeah either scenario it requires a, a a different number of a different type of, of um cellular organism yeah that there must have been exploring various sort of evolutionary niches and stuff yeah. and, and through some event either some kind of global cataclysm or just just luca being super good at doing everything yeah and <laughs> uh, they no longer they no longer exist yeah and the viruses are kind of like the hangover um remnant of it exactly exactly which is really interesting yeah uh, I, you do wonder these kinds of things are still happening I mean, presumably they are. These types of processes are still happening on Earth in the deep oceans. Yeah. I mean, they are. They well, definitely of course, would be yeah, still well, happening. Wouldn't, wouldn't it's just be. whether... Once you get the establishment of Luca and all its descendants, then basically it just gets... Everything just gets eaten. All these new you yeah. know, biomolecules, all these new kind of... Don't stand a chance. Just don't stand a chance. Yeah, they're just food. Yeah. They're just it, lumps of... It's not. It's no longer an even playing field with, no. with advantage spelled out by which molecules slightly... You know, you've got advanced cells 
like swimming around and yeah. fish and all kinds of stuff yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. you haven't got a chance now no exactly exactly so say it was say it was um what's special about luca say it was say it was no cataclysm and yeah. and Lu- luca won the race basically yeah and i ended up ended up proliferating and, and out competing everything so what what can we say about luca is there anything particularly unique about it i mean there's there's stuff that's 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 common to all biology right yeah there's aspects of of just you know the way that the the dna is 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 the dna code works and the way proteins yes. are built and stuff like that that literally all biology has um mm. that are kind of mis- slightly mysterious in the sense that we don't we don't know whether you know it was sort of what's called a frozen accident just something that just happened to be like that so everything mm. has ended up being like that or whether there's a like a fitness reason that um yeah that's, that darwinian evolution has channeled biology towards this particular um yeah so things like codons you're talking about so yeah yeah codons being it's like so every every set of like three uh bases on a, on a dna sequence yeah translates into a, an amino acid for a protein exactly. and there's no real reason why it has to be three it's just ended yeah. up being like why that. is it that why exactly. is it not four or two or whatever mm. um, and, and there's like redundancy built into that code and stuff that, that again Checks just errors in, yeah. in, the, in the processing of building proteins and stuff so yeah well, exactly why why is th- why is it three you know could you have four could you ha- would it be beneficial would it be worse to you know with that same same things and could it could it be that some of the other more primitive forms of life were using slightly different approaches to these, these yeah. problems and that something like luca or luca's ancestors had the best way of doing it the most yeah. efficient way the most sort of error free way or whatever yeah um the thing is that actually a lot of the, vi- the viruses will have the same genetic codes and th- at that very basic level yeah tend to function but the same so suggest that, that, that was they've co-evolved with everything yeah, since could be so could they've be. got some some bits that re- remain from potentially stuff older than luca yeah. but largely they they now resemble the things that they infect yeah yeah could um, be but yeah, I mean, so so it might be that those, like you say, those the fact that Luca uses things like a three base code on, you know, yeah. th- these types of similarities we see amongst all life is actually the most efficient way or the best way to to out compete and and survive. Yeah, and, and might and, be something we'd always expect to kind of end up like yeah, that in life, yeah. in in any biosphere anywhere potentially. Yeah. If it, yeah, it, it, and that's 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 going to be one of the questions if if extant life is ever discovered off the Earth. Mm that's going to be one of the sort of many billions of questions yes, but yeah. that's going to be a very fundamental part yeah that's because that's a bit of a mystery you know in terms of the way the biology is put together and the yeah because you might have level. two separate origins of life and have two things that separately evolve that actually almost map onto the, the, the trees of each other because they, they look very very similar yeah except for they clearly have separate ancestors but they can be mapped onto each other's trees not in the sense that those trees don't overlap sure. because they're not actually genetically linked. They have gone undergone, but you can almost map them at like the same types of pacing and things. And yeah, not that there's just one that's so fundamentally different from the other. That yeah, you might be able to predict that certain sort and certain innovations are going to happen yeah. at certain times, yeah. just based on this is the way that it pans out because yeah. there's a fitness reason for it. This is the best way of doing things. Yeah, when you run that biology experiment on different planets, it actually ends up looking the same each time, or or totally different. <laughs> yeah, or there are actually tons of organisms on the earth that use fundamentally different biochemistry that we just don't know about yeah because actually what we're looking at with our tree of life and luca and all this stuff is actually just part of part of what's going on on the earth yeah because we map onto it ourselves and we maybe biased and well all of our most yeah all of our techniques really for looking for looking especially genetic techniques for looking at microbial life is is all biased towards that particular biochemistry exactly you end up you know every every piece of sequencing you do of an environment so if you try and look at all the genetic code in an environment you're looking specifically for things that match up to previous life and using techniques yeah. that that uh, amplify or or create more dna for the basically things with three base codes th- yeah, things exactly. we expect we use enzymes that copy dna you know in these from, techniques from, from other from... things that map onto that tree of life exactly. so we're all basing everything on that um so it's possible that actually there is a uh, some kind of sh- what do they call it yeah like a shadow a shadow, a shadow biosphere a kind <laughs> of secondary biosphere that has either different biochemical systems or sometimes they use that to refer to things that just haven't been grown in labs right yes that might be also a use of that term 
um, which is actually completely different. I mean, that's that's yeah less mysterious and more just a kind of I don't know experimental problem at, the, at this point in science rather yeah. than like an actual kind of slightly weird. Yeah, but that right. that's still interesting in the sense that the, the diversity of life we might not see fully because you, oh, lo- yeah. you look at you sequence environments and actually you find so many different types of organisms that don't really map they map onto the tree of life but they don't match up to currently you know def- big defined branches of the tree of yeah, life sure. there's huge huge regions that ha- and so for some reason you can't grow them because they're uh, f- for whatever reason difficult to to grow yeah. there was actually that s- there was a recent study that estimated the no, oh, there was bacteria. It built species. a new tree of life out of it. Yeah, to to over a trillion. Yeah, whatever a bacterial species really is, yeah, it's a bit yeah. of a fluid sort of concept with bacteria. Yeah. but um, over a trillion, which is just insane. And I think that the total number of known species in the world is something like just over a million. And I don't mean bacteria. I mean total number of known species of anything in the world. Yes, is about a million and a bit. I think. Yeah maybe something a bit more i don't know but that includes all animals and insects and and everything yes and bacteria and there's potentially over a trillion species of, of just bacteria <laughs> um that's there's pretty a lot, insane a lot more to discover yeah. yeah yeah so i think there's the shadow biosphere idea as in the the totally different biochemistry idea is is not it, it's a fringe idea yeah, it's not taken that seriously no um i mean it's one of those things it's just like yeah why not it's possible yeah it's um, more it's more an argument from ignorance it's kind of uh, sorry an argument of just like we don't know maybe yeah i mean there are weird things uh, people have seen you know people have found in in sort of microscope images and things that turn out to be stuff like these giant viruses that look a bit oh. strange and und- and then you manage to get them in culture and they undergo a virus like lifestyle and you get it sequenced and it's like oh it's a weird pandora never seen yeah. this kind of thing before yeah um you know, so it might be that there's there's branches of of life using the same biochemistry that are just really quite different to anything we've seen. Yes, yeah, and that's um, entirely possible. Yeah, but anyway, there's a lot out there. Yeah, it, but it, it it's that's a very much a fringe theory that you have something with a fundamentally different biochemistry. Yeah, yeah. Um, still still being able to compete and live on Earth. That would almost be as big a discovery as 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 life on Mars. Yes, it would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, I don't know actually. I mean, depends depends how it's related to things. Yeah. If it is related and it's just acquired some funky mutation later on down the line, yeah. I mean, it's a huge, massive, massive. Yeah, discovery. yeah, that would still be huge. Um, but it would but, be. But it might, that might not be quite as big as if oh, this is actually has a different origin of yeah, a different sort of different origin of cell cellular life. Yeah, that's 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 huge. That's, that's absolutely. I mean, that that is equivalent to finding life on another planet, really, with a separate origin of life. Yeah. It's possibly bigger than finding life on another planet. Um, if that life share, if it's a panspermia type situation, mm. where that life on Mars, say, shares a common ancestor with mm. the stuff on Earth, mm. if you find something on Earth that has is from a different origin, that's that's potentially bigger news. Yeah. But yeah, as you say, it's a fringe idea. Fringe so, idea. So you know, who knows? Don't, let's not get too excited about it. <laughs>